Hey guys, what's up? This is False Bulls123, and I think this is day 65 of our daily quarantine challenge. Hopefully that's correct. As you know, I got my Suns Out, Guns Out t-shirt on, so that means that I'm just living my best life. And um, today, I actually kind of wanted to do another rap song. So, I don't know how well it's going to be. I only really have a couple verses actually written of it. But I think I'm just going to get into it, and then I'm going to explain a bit of the context and just kind of shoot the shit for probably the rest of, like, you know, the video. I want to start keeping these long because I'm starting to fill up my camera reel again, and it's going to take me a second to actually, like, you know, delete a bunch of photos and delete all my old videos and shit like that. So, yeah. So, pretty much, let's get into it, and I don't feel like doing a bunch of clips, so I'm just going to start. To sit in some silence in a dim, dark, dark, and I push a little prisoner of a lifelong lock. Oh, with the sensation of a short, sharp shock of a chippy chippy chopper in a big black block. Young Rumple Stillskin. Trust and convicted. Yeah, these crimes I've committed. Now I'm spitting game in prison. Look at my face, that's a vision. Look in my eyes, I have vision. Hollering, yeah, are you listening? So I've always got conviction, yeah. Well, you're crying at me like a baby in the manger. Call me Messiah, but, but you know what? Ain't you saving? Just finessing the block, cause you know I get the flavor of a juice. The firm handshake at a gentleman's wager. And I realize I really need to start writing out these rap songs before I do these, like, you know, vlogs. But, whatever the fuck, you know. Hey, like, Ryan, that was weird. That was super weird. What was that rap song about? Did you even try? And I'm just like, bitch, you know I didn't. Do I ever? I do not. But pretty much, that's... Basically how I started workshopping one of my characters for D&D. And you're thinking, rap music and D&D, Ryan? Those things don't go together. That's dumb. Well, fuck you too. And essentially the idea of it was, I was thinking about the story of Rumpelstiltskin, and I'm just like, now hear me out. What if Rumpelstiltskin was like totally not like, you know, just a weird dude who kidnapped babies and ate them or something? But he was just like this sort of like trickster fella, and he just had a huge orphanage. Now hear me out. I basically thought, thinking, that would be totally chill. Like, what if I just had a character like that in my D&D campaign? And so pretty much, this would be slotted for way, way down the line, sort of like... I'm going to say, probably the culmination of the Eastern Kingdom. It... Because the way I have it set up for my campaign is that there's four kingdoms, right? Each of them have their own sort of like, I guess, mini arc for it. But I haven't really decided anything like too specific for that. And I wanted to be for the Eastern Kingdom that they would have to basically be going upriver the entire time until they got to not the capital, but basically to the Summer Festival, which is in like this giant lake, which is called Crystal Lake. But it pretty much looks like Crater Lake. Like, I thought it, like, I was thinking about it and I'm just like, I totally straight up ripped off Crater Lake. And I apologize about that noise in the background, that's our neighbors doing something. That actually might be the automa- the automat? Auto shop? Okay, whatever. Doing something, or who knows, there's always some sort of noise pollution in the back. So, sorry if that's like super loud or whatever. It's people doing yard work. I haven't been able to get, like, you know, a weeder or a lawnmower up and yet, so we're still a little bit... We look like an 80s porno right now, basically. That's all you need to know. But pretty much you have the summer festival, right? And what's happening is this... I'm trying to remember, like, the exact details, because I haven't fleshed out that story part at all, because I'm still working on, like, you know, the beginning portions of, like, you know, my campaign, because I'm a little bitch. But pretty much, there's like this festival, there was like this dragon, and so it starts off kind of like, um... I guess the musicians of... I don't remember what I was saying. But pretty much, like, you know, it's this like music festival. So think like Coachella or something, but fantasy-like. And so they have this contest for like, you know, these bards. And one thing I thought was actually pretty interesting was that... The contest was actually for like musical bards, because bards can technically be like any type of performance arts, like... You could technically be, like, a bard and be, like, a stripper or something. I have played a character that did that. 
Not stripping specifically, she also played a musical instrument, but she was a burlesque dancer. And she's actually read this part of the story now that I'm thinking about it, oh my goodness. But pretty much, like, the whole point of the contest is that whoever wins basically gets a, I guess, contract with this new record label. And this is a new thing, because basically they had just discovered how to put sound onto, like, disc and stuff. And so they're like, this is totally cool. Because, like... With the aid of magic, there's really no reason why the fantasy world shouldn't possibly have things like radio or television. Considering that they can like create scry ring like magic, or they can like have a bunch of illusion magic. So it's like what? People can't broadcast like television programs? And so I kind of want to make into the story where like things such as like sort of fantasy televisions and radios start becoming more common as it progresses. And so one of the things is that they're basically starting their first contract to create these sort of musical magical discs. And so you get all this contest. And so I actually include, give me a second, I actually dropped something. There you go. And so I actually, like, you know, created, like, quite a few characters that I wrote into the story from a variety of different parts of, like, you know, I tend to use a lot of my D&D campaign, and I tend to, like, you know, draw a lot of different inspiration from a bunch of shit. So, first, the main character that you have to meet is Tig Albany, which is actually one of my old PCs. I have transplanted every single one of my PCs from, like, my old D&D campaigns into my world because, like, I already have a fleshed out backstory for them, so why not? And, like, you know, I know their characters, and so, like, I can do that as an NPC really, really well. And before you say, no, it's not like a DPC or like whatever those like things where like, you know, dang snap it. Like, you know, where the DM like goes and like plays stuff. I do have a character like that in the beginning, but I do want to like have that as sort of like, you know, a minor character that like a, a guest player can use. But we're getting off track here on this shoot the shit episode, you know? <laughs> and so... Wow, just, can, like, they stop? Like, this is super freaking noisy. Yeah, we just can totally blow out your ears if you ain't careful. Remember, kids, PPE is important, no matter what you're doing. But yeah, pretty much you have Tig Albany, who is a burlesque dancer, essentially. And she is also an asexual, dragonborn bard. And her, her point is that basically she's the NPC you need to meet to actually get into the West Kingdom from the East Kingdom through, like, a bunch of lore shit that I'm not going to get into. Other interesting characters to note, and I've only really made three bards in this contest, I'm working on it, is Tiffany and Courtney, who are my two Valley Girl character voices. Oh my goodness, Tiffany! Oh my goodness, Courtney! And they just, like... And that's, like, a thing back and forth for them. Originally, I kind of wanted to have a sort of concept I wanted to make a concept album with like the two character voices and it would just be like Courtney and Tiffany rapping because there was like this rap contest at their school and they're like what is rap and it was supposed to like be this like really weird like in-depth look at like rap music in general but I'm probably not going to do that because I can't rap first of all I definitely can't rap pretending to be a valley girl chick so like even though I have, like, a decent Valley Girl character accent. And so, like, you know, in my... So in the D&D campaign, they're both bards. And they're also secret lesbian lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes. Just, what if we make it secret... What if we just, like, make it gay and everyone just, like, doesn't know they're gay and just think they're gal pals? But then they're just like, that's right, bitch, we suck each other's pussy. And they're like, what? I'm gonna make it super obvious, though. There, because I plan to, for the campaign, I like to do extraneous content, like, you know, in the background. And so I plan actually recording several different, like, you know, songs for each of the bards in question. For various levels of decency. Because I'm a trash human being. And there's, it's literally going to be a duet of, Oh, Hannah, I want to feel you close. Oh, Hannah, come lie with my bones, and Jenny, my dear, you're my best friend. But there's something that you don't know about. 
So a mashup of Jenny by Studio Killers and I Want to Be a Girlfriend by Girl in Red. You know the two biggest lesbian bops of just pop music. And I'm just like, if people don't get that that's gay by the time that they sing that, like... I don't know, like, all is lost. Like, there's going to be a lot of their lesbians harrowed in that fucking characterization. Because, if I... I just love, like, the idea of just, like, really, like, obviously queer-coded characters and just, like, someone being oblivious to it, because... Not that, like, all of my queer characters in my campaign are, like, super obvious. Like, literally, in my first campaign, I have, like, another female... Savic relationship that I do not hint at at all. Well, I'm gonna give it like some characterization, but it's not going to be super oblique. So it's like I do have like other queer like relationships and characters that aren't super super like. By the way, that gay is just like whatever. Let's see. Of course, I do also name a queer character the gays Fudge Packer Esquire. But that's really just because I wanted to have a character called The Gaze. Uh, still one of my favorite NPCs of all time. That I will not get to until like five fucking years from now because I'm a lazy piece of shit that doesn't write his fucking campaign. I need to get on it. It's just I've had like a lot of other shit to do and I'm just like, what do I want to do? Look over stat blocks like a fucking nerd. Or play Minecraft like a fucking nerd. And I'm just like, right now I want to play Minecraft. Because, literally, not, like, I only have one player that's actually turned into a character sheet. And I'm just like, hey guys, don't want to be up your ass, but it's like... Like, you know, I don't want to be up somebody's ass, but at the same time, like, you know, I want to be able to facilitate communication and say, hey, like, do you want to be in this party? And it's like, at the DM, I have to learn these things, I have to make tough decisions, and it's all that. Um, I guess this is just a shooting the shit episode now, so... I'm trying to think about anything else, like, you know, that's really fun to talk about. I guess, like, you know, it, um, that situation that was stressing me out earlier this week, that's looking up. I really haven't been doing anything with my blog. I need to, need to really badly actually write shit. I've just been a lazy piece of shit and I haven't been doing that, so... Fuck me, I guess. And I have been making decent progress in the yard. Um, finished up around the fruit house, which I don't think I've ever really told you that we have names of the outbuildings, but we do. And so I'm going to get started on this, like, you know, area all the way over here that looks like a hedge, but it's actually three years with the blackberry vines. Yay me. Yay. Um, besides that, I don't really have any news. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog tomorrow, and that's going to be a lot of excuse me, a lot of fun. I downloaded Hoopla, which is like Libby, but I don't like the UI as much. And I'm having a little trouble finding, like, books I want to read, because they're all just kind of, like, piled slapdash and, like, you know, the feed. And I'm like, I don't like that. It's a little hard to find the books I want to read. I like Libby's system better. But it's just whatever. Yeah. Hopefully, like, you know, sometime, hopefully by the beginning of June, I can get back to work. That's what I'm really, really, really hoping. Just because I've literally been stuck in quarantine for, like, two months. I haven't, like, you know, been able to get, like, any money. And it's, like, and it sucks. Luckily, I'm caretaking for my mom. So as soon as I can figure, as we can figure out, like, you know, we're having a little issue with, um, the, I guess I really can't say that. So I, like, ignore that. I have not like, you know, I've been taking care of my mom, not in any f official capacity, because, like, you know, it's supposed to, like, tell people, like, who you take care of, but it's, like, basically, like, I've been doing some stuff on the side with, like, you know, the certification I have, and so hopefully once we figure out some hour things, I can actually get paid for that, but besides that, like, you know, I'm just sitting here looking pretty, which I'm good at, like, hi, but it's just, it's not what I want to do. Um, I guess, I'm trying to think if there's any other plans for this month. So, I think I might postpone this month's RJ's Pies, not because I don't want to, but because I might have to financially. And when I do get back into, like, you know, the kitchen for that, that is going to be a Indianan, Indianan? Yes, a Hoosier sugar cream pie with peaches, right? So it's going to be peaches and cream. 
If you've never had a sugar cream pie, I actually really suggest that they are quite lovely. It's basically like a type of custard or pudding, but it's, let's see, it's a mixture of cream and milk and just some cornstarch. Though I've heard there's several other ways to prepare it. I'm just familiar with the pudding method with the cornstarch and the cream. You basically cook the on the stove, pour it into a pie shell, bake it, allow it to set, and then you sprinkle that with cinnamon sh and nutmeg. And so it actually just has a really lovely, just sprinkled look to it. And it's similar to like, you know, maybe a buttermilk pie or just any other sort of like custard pie that you can think of. But it just has an absolutely fantastic curd to it, which I really love. I figure what I should do with that is I'm probably going to use... I don't know if I'll use fresh peaches, though I definitely want to try it with fresh peaches, though I think in the future it might be nice just to use peach preserves or just canned peaches for simplicity, though I think I will use fresh peaches in the recipe just because I, ha I try to have that from scratch air and try to avoid, like, you know, I'm trying to avoid using canned goods, pre-made processes, because I want to revel in the joy of making things from scratch, you know? And I'm trying to think, and I would like to try to make a caramel syrup for it. And so I really need to work on my caramel sauces just because I have not been able to successfully create a good caramel sauce since the baking segment of culinary school. And I'm just like, ugh. Like, I'm not a baker. I like baking pies. I like, you know, to bake as a hobbyist, but like... I can't, I'm not the type of person that can do it, I'm not the type of person that does it professionally, and so it's like, caramel sauces are my absolute bane, okay? I'm a, you say, make me a caramel sauce, and I'm just like, I'm a try chef, but I'm a warn you, I'm a little bitch when it comes to heating up sugar, and it caramelizes. it. Like, you ask me to cook a steak, no, me it's also one of my weaknesses, like, I'll try my best, but like, you ask me to make a caramel sauce, and I'm just like, ooh, that gonna hurt a little. But hey. It was Julia Child, she said, like, be a bad bitch in the kitchen, be fearless. I don't remember what she said exactly. Maybe I'll put a quote in the comments. Maybe I won't. Maybe I don't give a shit. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, we kind of got on for, like, you know, way too long. It was fun to chat with you guys, just sort of shoot the shit for today, because I had that rap song, but I honestly thought that, like, you know, it was going to last longer than a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. Alright guys, um, I hope you had fun just sort of like, you know, relaxing at the end of the week. Let me know down below if you have any ideas for daily vlogs in the future. If this is going to continue past next week, I would love to hear from you guys. I always want to hear from you. Like, why aren't you commenting it? It breaks my little heart. Like, look at this. Broken. Like that dude at the end of, um, the Frog Prince. Like, just absolutely heartbroken, wasted, saddened by everything in life. So, like, you know, comment down below. Make me happy. Put a smile on this face. Um, other than that, like, you can always like, comment, and subscribe. I know everyone says that. I just told you to comment, but do it again. Why is it going to kill you? Nope, it ain't. And for, like, all the obvious reasons. It helps me grow my channel. And I guess you can share this video if you really, really want to. Not sure why you would. These are kind of just, like, you know, my random, like, week daily vlogs. I like shooting the shit. I think shooting the shit is definitely something... That is great for me every once in a while as a vlogger. It just allows me to sort of like take back and have a sort of like ad lib video. And yeah, I ain't Bill Murray. I fucking suck at ad libbing. But I like it. It has a sort of journal approach to it where I just, I vent. I tell you like, you know, what's up in my life. The type of things I'm excited for. Some of my thoughts and feelings. And you're like, wow, Ryan, when do you not do that any of the other times you make a video? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. But like, you're right. But yeah, it's like, I like making these videos every once in a while because it allows me to relax in front of the camera. Just for me to, I don't know, just be a bit more personal than whatever sort of content I'm going to be making. I have some, like, interesting ideas for next week. I'm trying to, I'm starting to, like, kind of get into, like, my second wind with these daily vlogs, though. I am still a little bitch in the editing. Probably not going to change this week. I've just been dealing with some bullshit, and I needed to... I need to relax this week. I say while well, continuously working every day in multiple different venues and daily vlogging, but I am a high strung person and if I stop moving like a shark, I will drown and suffocate and die. So hey! <laughs> anyway guys, 
I was ending this video, don't know what the fuck happened, and that's usually most of my life. So, I'm gonna shut the fuck up now. I want you to tell your family you love them. And as always, this is False Bulls, one, two, three, signing off.